Hey gang, welcome back for another episode here on Geochem. All right gang, guys and girls of the chemical world, in this video, we're going to look at a reaction called the Claisen Rearrangement. And I'm sure if you're looking at the reaction, you're probably thinking, what the hell is going on? And don't worry, that's what I first thought whenever I saw one of these for the first time. Luckily, once you see one of them, they're very easy and they're not difficult. There's no really m real mechanism. It's just a one-step concerted thing. So we're going to look at this example, one more example, and even by the second one, you're going to be like, clay and rearrangements, cute. I promise you, it's not that bad. Okay, so let's take a look. So in this reaction right here, it is a bit jarring to see that clearly we have an oxygen here that we see over here, and we see these three carbons clearly move next door. And all that we all that we needed to do to make that happen was just cook up the temperature in our reaction, just throw in some heat, right? So how did this work? How does this work? So I'm gonna just redraw our reactant down here. Okay, so the way I like to mentally think about this is clearly we this carbon gets involved and clearly it grabs something, right? So this carbon is going to command these two electrons, yes, touching the electrons in the air max system, it's going to grab them and attach to the carbon on the end. If we do nothing, we make a big no-no and break the octet rule. So what we need to do is bounce a pair of the electrons in the double bond over here. Again, if we do nothing, big no-no, we break the octet rule here. So what happens actually is that the electrons here we break this oxygen carbon bond and we make a double bond right here, which makes sense because since this carbon took both of these electrons right here, this carbon right here is open to accept a bond. So this carbon loses the bond here, but gets a bond back there. So if we just draw the result of that, what does it look like? Let's play the game of what did we touch, what didn't we touch? We didn't touch either of these bonds, we have a double bond, a double bond here, we have a ketone. And so on this carbon right here, this is maybe the funkier part, we have our, we have, we're attached to this carbon right here, this asterisk carbon, okay? So now off of this carbon, right, I just have two more and we're not attached here anymore. So it's really just the asterisk and then the additional two carbons. Whoop. And the double bond is going to be between, it's gonna be on the end. Okay, so just by drawing these three arrows, we actually see that we're almost done. But I'm sure you're wondering, and even maybe you thought about it when we first, when I first drew this arrow is, Joe, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you messing with the aromaticity and the ring? They, it had a good thing going, and you're absolutely right. But there's no reason why, kind of in the Colby reaction, we can't get it back, right? Because uh, at this position, we clearly have this extra H right here, and what will happen is, whatever you're running this reaction is, you're gonna have some base, it could be water, it could be anything. This ring wants to get back its aromaticity so bad, anything's gonna help it out, right? You can just say water, whatever's around, we'll grab the H, oof, um, man, here, I'll do this. Swing these in here, electrons kick up, and I can even draw this in a separate step, but, you know, well, eh, you know what I'll do? At the same time, we'll just say that these electrons don't kick up. We'll just say that they grab uh, a proton from hydronium. So you see, what I, you see what I did there? I had water pick off this proton. The electrons came up, restored the aromaticity. We break the octet rule here if we did nothing. So I took oxygen. says, okay, I'm gonna take these two electrons. I'm gonna pick up H. This will make me a, an alcohol. And bam, that's the Clays and rearrangement. So it's not bad. You work with you know one, two, three, four, five, six. You work with six atoms. There's going to be an oxygen embedded in the chain. That's how you know you're working with a clays and rearrangement. Okay. So let me clean this up. We'll do one more example. So this is kind of like your standard clayson, and then we you can have kind of a uh, a clayson that doesn't involve uh, a ring, which is called an aliphatic clays and rearrangement. So give me one second, and we'll. Look at what that is all about. Okay, gang, let's rip this aliphatic Claisen rearrangement and call it quits for this video. Okay, so 
First of all, what does the word aliphatic mean? Aliphatic just means not in a ring. Super fancy, it's almost one of those, like, really, they made a word for this type of word? But now you know it, you can sound super duper smart. Okay, so, uh, again, we know we're dealing with a Claisner arrangement because we're cranking up the heat, and we see some double bonds, and we have an oxygen embedded in our uh, chain, okay? Whether, you know, ring, chain, in this case, since it's an aliphatic Claisner arrangement, uh, it's in a chain. That's not a ring. Okay, so what do we do here? So, it doesn't matter which end we're working with, this is symmetrical here, right? And I guess the other built-in check is one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six atoms doing a Claisen, oxygen's in the middle of the chain. Let's see how this works out. So, I'm gonna, I don't know, just, I'm working from the bottom. This carbon is gonna command these electrons right here, the two right in that double bond. It's gonna reach out and say, okay, I'm grabbing this carbon up top. Let's play the don't break the octet rule game. So I, if I avoid breaking the octet rule here, I can bounce these electrons right here, but I'm gonna to need to avoid breaking the octet rule here. How do I do that? Well, you can take the bonds right here, break this carbon oxygen bond, and form a oxygen carbon double bond between this carbon and this oxygen, which makes sense because this carbon lost the bond when this double bond was used to bond up top. Super weird, I know, but if you just do one or two of these, they make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna number my carbons. We'll break out the green for that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so what I like to do is, what I'm gonna do is I know three and four, there was a bond breakage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with three and then work my way around, because I know one and six got bonded together. So there's a three, two double bond. So I can do this, let me manage all these markers. Three and two. I know, I now know I have a two and one single bond. I have a one and six single bond. And um, this probably is not gonna turn out looking, actually I should make this a little bit more slanted. If this looks ugly, I apologize. I'm not too great at like drawing these if you draw them correctly, they look really cool and symmetrical, how like before and after. So six is there, and then I have just a five and six. I did not, oh, I'm sorry, gang. This, that's a ugly arrow. Oof, there we go. Whew, really sorry about that. It needs to start at the bond. Okay, so a five and six single bond. It's five. And here you go. You got your five and four, your carbon oxygen double bond. So it's an aldehyde, okay? So that is your successful Claisen rearrangement in an aliphatic setting, okay? So nothing crazy here. I would just find some examples. Uh, I'll have some on the worksheet. Uh, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, uh, give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and uh, you know check out some more organic things to do. And no matter what, I'll see you in the next video.